All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Fantasy Hockey Hacks podcast, a member of the Hockey Podcast Network. The big news this week for us as a podcast, joining THPN. Um, guys, we're pretty excited, hey? It's um, it's a big deal for our little podcast. Insert crickets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Super, super excited. Super excited. Oh, man. It's... Uh, yeah, I was just just come to expect this sort of silence after I talk at the start of the podcast. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to start by saying thank you to to Isha, to Dylan, and to Brandon for allowing us to join such a great network of people and podcasters. Um, they've been incredibly welcoming. All the other podcasts on the network have been very welcoming. Um, as a member of THPN, they provide a lot of resources and contacts, sponsors, promotions, things like that that we haven't previously had access to. And so for our listeners, for those of you that follow us, um, you know, the show is only going to get better. We've got a lot of great things coming up that we're really excited about. Um, and, and thank you to everyone that has listened because your support, whether it be through downloads or through social media follows or likes, whatever it may be, uh, has been appreciated. And, and I personally wanted to just say thank you to my co-hosts, Bruce, John, Tyler. You guys make this show worth listening to on a weekly basis because if it was just me, God knows nobody would listen. So. <laughs> Um, <laughs> nobody wants my terrible opinions anyways <laughs> there you go so uh with that said guys we, we do have John's one list. other big announcement to make this evening that the four of us are, are really excited about um we've got a special guest on here with us uh mike mclaughlin from left wing lock mike welcome back to the show yeah thanks for having me back of course um we wanted to bring mike on to the show because the fantasy hockey hacks podcast has partnered with Left Wing Lock, and we are now the official podcast of Left Wing Lock. Um, so, Mike, thank you very much for your partnership. We're looking forward to this. We're, we're going to have you on once a month um, to run through your own segment, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. And we'll uh, we'll sort of determine what that segment's going to look like, whether it's, you know, um, picks or, or uh, rankings or whatever the case may be. We're going to sort through that, and we'll, we'll get the details out to you guys as soon as we have ironed them out. But for tonight, we wanted to have Mike on to to be here for the announcement to talk about um, what's going on this week. We're going to get into Ask the Hacks. We'll get into the news. Um, and I guess, Mike, you'll basically hang around for, for as long as you're able. Oh, yeah, sure. And, and again, I wanted to say thank you guys for reaching out about this partnership. Uh, our, our team has been looking to, uh, to have a podcast, uh, a podcast partnership, and we think this is a perfect fit. So uh, thanks again for reaching out. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, and, you. and that was sort of, <clears throat> excuse me, that was my, my mindset as well. Um, I just thought you, you have so much knowledge. And, and like I said before, I just really appreciate the work that you're doing over at Left Wing Lock. And, and I think we just have an opportunity to share with more people the good things you're doing. So um, we're, we're happy to have you here. So with that, um, I guess we'll get into it. And, and starting with, uh, with segment, our first segment, John's list, which uh, <laughs> Tyler is is a a recent listy, I guess we'll say, and uh, and Mike, you yourself yourself said you wanted to try and avoid getting on the list. So, um, <laughs> don't worry, Mike, you're safe so far. Safe so far. There you go. <laughs> Week one so, immunity, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll give you a pass. All right, John, with that, buddy, get into it. Um, so last week I kind of, uh, with the, uh, the Dominic Hasek, uh, pick, I kind of hinted that this week's was going to be a, a polar opposite. Um, and of course that leaves me with, uh, none other than Curtis Joseph. You just made the list. Uh, he has made the list <laughs> and reason being oh my God. his helmet is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely stellar helmet, but his playing ability, just not up to par in my books. Um, with a career 906 save percentage, career high of 915. Numbers like that. Uh, goals against averages were high twos, low threes. You're not going to win many games. Um, and also, the fans of Curtis Joseph. They... They're really the ones that get to me um, <laughs> because they they think he's the best goalie on earth. It doesn't matter who you talk to. You find a Cujo fan and instantly better than Patty Wobb, it better than Marty Broder, better than everybody. And it just drives me absolutely mental. 
Um, my my cousin would would just pound it into me that oh yeah he's the greatest. Um, the teams he played on were garbage. It, it was never his fault. Never his fault. And it's like well, the guy got outplayed by Manny Legacy one year. Like I I I can't defend that. <laughs> okay, well. I mean, I think that threw Bruce and Tyler both off a little bit. Um, I had heard about it earlier in the week, so I just kind of had a chuckle. But Mike, as, as the new guy here on the podcast, we, we got to hear from you. What's your take on that one? C- Curtis Joseph making John's list. Uh, well, after, after hearing that, I'm glad he didn't end up on the Philadelphia Flyers when they were going for a <laughs> playoff run you know, two decades ago. They were looking for a goalie, and I think they ended up with John Van, v- Van v- Viesbrook instead of... Uh, <laughs> Instead of Curtis, Curtis Joseph here. Oh man, there you go. Okay, uh, and I, I should have mentioned for anyone who's new to the show or hasn't listened before, uh, John's list is basically just John's shit list of players, past and present. Um, there's not always a rhyme or reason. It, it started as a bit of a joke uh, amongst the four of us because he would just throw out random guys, and, and Tyler kind of said, "Oh, he's on the list," and uh, so that that's kind of the backstory on that one. So w- I guess with that, we'll. <laughs> Thanks, John, again for for running that segment. Um, always good stuff. We always have fun with it. Absolutely, every kid wanted to be him, but everyone should have wanted to play better than him. Well, okay, shots fired, <laughs> Cujo, if you're listening. Sorry. All right, let's <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to the hockey news and injury updates uh, for the past week here. Presented by Sports Interaction, Canada's odds maker, providing competitive odds on all sports. Follow the link in our show notes to get up to $125 in free bets. Starting off with November 29th, Carey Price was on the ice for practice in Montreal. Um, I actually, and there's an update today, I, I can't remember who it was, but a beat reporter put something out saying, don't expect to see Carey Price back in December, but he was in full gear um, skating. So for what it's worth, uh, he's, he's back, but he's not. So plan your roster accordingly. Uh, Alexander Barkov was on the ice in Florida with teammates. He, uh, he was participating in, in practice, but he's still not playing. Boston Bruins forward Brad Marchand had a hearing with the NHL's Department of Player Safety for slew footing Oliver Ekman Larson. Guys, this has basically become the, the season of the slew foot. Um, I, I, oddly enough, I don't know what's going on. We talked about it. I think it was last week or the week before. Slew foots all over the league. This one was a little bit more subtle I guess I'll say but because it's Brad Marchand you got three games for it so I, I mean just the the inconsistency with the Department of Player Safety is ridiculous because here's PK Subban a th- now a three-time offender in one season and he got fined four. every time four sorry Bruce four times he's done it he's done it four times now okay sorry my apologies he didn't get fined he, he didn't even get fined or penalized in the last one so wow. yeah and and here's Brad Marchand does it once and and really it was a little bit suspect but three games automatically right so i mean reputation has has a lot to do with 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 your uh your punishment i guess any 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 thoughts or, or takes on the the slew foot that's been going on here no okay i, I, re- I really um, didn't think it was that bad thank you yeah yeah I, suban did it like the next day after that too the old suban slide and he doesn't get anything <laughs> yeah. for it so uh, I don't know. Subban slew. Did you did you trademark that yet, Tyler? Because you you came up with I'm, that last week. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna send that in. Send that in. <laughs> you guys can make a nice T-shirt out of that. I think. Yeah, well, the I'll, make slide. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make T-shirts. Yeah, Tyler Tyler loves designing stuff like that. So yeah, we'll get him on it. Um, Casey Middlestad appeared at practice in a full contact jersey. He's actually back playing now. Uh, Alex Tuck was also at practice wearing a non-contact jersey. That roster is going to look considerably better um, once those two guys are, well, both running, right? Um, according to Rick, uh, I'm going to butcher this, but uh, Dollywall, <laughs> uh, the athletic in Vancouver, the San Jose Sharks are willing to eat half of Evander Kane's salary in a trade. Kane, who was placed on waiver Sunday, has hired a new agent, Dan Milstein, who is reaching out to teams around the league. Kane cleared waivers early Monday afternoon. Um, any chance he gets picked up, guys? I think some team will take a chance on him. Okay, interesting. Not I who, but I think some team will. Uh, is his salary is sure going to be cheap if somebody, you know, if they retain fifty percent? 
That's a good point. At, you're looking at yeah. about three and a half million dollars for a guy who shoots the puck, you know, about three and a half times a game. Can I that, mean, can that per, make... on a personal level, he might not be a fan favorite or even a <laughs> locker room favorite. But, uh, <laughs> Nobody favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I think the... he's already I, on the I list, right? <laughs> oh, for sure he is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the the term that's going to be the issue because I think he still has four years on that. So if it was two years, I think it would be pretty easy. You'd probably find somebody like Buffalo or Arizona to take him, but four years is a long time of his shit. Yeah, no, we, we yeah. talked about that a bit last week too. It is. It's um, He's got a short shelf life. Even with a strong locker room, I think it'd be difficult to, to hang on to him at three and a half. But I, some team probably will bite, right, at, at three and a half or $4 million, <clears throat> um, just given what he can do when he's – playing well and, and not causing shit but i i personally I, I i want the others to take no part in that just move along oh well, the oilers have a guy like that but he's been a lot better since then which guy who are you talking about cassian oh he's he's been a model citizen now for the past three or four years <laughs> yeah well maybe that's uh maybe kane will end up that way too you don't know right someone's got to give him a chance right that is it true. worked for cassian maybe it'll work for kane too you make a valid point bruce damn it He's still reasonably young, right? Evander Kane, I think he's only 30. Yeah. He, it I was feels like guess he's been in the yeah. league forever. I, th- I think he came in at 18, right? And He's just one of these guys. Yeah. You hear his name every year, and you expect him to be, you know, 34, 35 by now. And Still got lots of tread left, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he'll find a home somewhere. I just I don't think it's going to be in San Jose again. Um, Brett Pesci... <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry. I, I didn't break this down by COVID protocol, so we're just going to run through them as they show up. But uh, Brett Pesci and Tony D'Angelo were in COVID protocol. William Carlson was in COVID protocol, but he returned this evening. Uh, Miko Koivu will become the first player in wild history to have his number retired. Jared Bednar expected Nathan McKinnon to return on Wednesday against the Leafs, which he did. Uh, Brian Russ is week-to-week with a lower body injury. Mike, we're chatting with us a bit uh, before the show, Tuka Rask was on the ice with uh, Linus Olmark and Jeremy Swayman. Uh, still no timetable for his return, but um, there was some talk that, you know, they, they are going to look at bringing him back. Like, they, they've, it's, it's all but certain now. They're going to bring him back. They're just not sure when. Yeah, and I think the original timeline on that injury had him coming back in, in early January. Yeah. So, I mean, I, like I said earlier, I've stashed him in three leagues. Um I, I think he's worth, if you can, if you got an open IR slot, take a look, stash him. It, it's, I mean, Allmark hasn't been great for them this year, but given the contract, you can't really get rid of him. And then Swayman, um, you know, he, he, he can get sent down. So that's probably a likely scenario, I think, is you'll see Swayman go down regardless. Because he's been up and down this year, hey, guys? He's had some great starts, and he's kind of been, he's been lit up a couple times too, so. I wouldn't be surprised if they sent him down, kept all Mark, and you know had him play as backup and have Rask starting. Or am I out? Or am I out to lunch? I, I think you have it nailed down. Uh, I, I don't think they I really think so have too. any other options, really, unless they're looking to, you know, trade all Mark after yeah. three months, which I, I don't think is on the table. No, you're not going to get full value for that guy, right? No. Um, you want some breaking Oilers news? What is it good? Con- Connor McDavid just got five in a game for boarding. Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, Kempe hit him right in the numbers. He gets five in a game, so he's done for the night. Oh, man, worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, ta- I'll take that all night. Yep. Uh. There's some hits you just make. Oh man, that sucks. (laughs) Was it still two one? Last it was two one after two periods, and I I hadn't obviously seen the rest of it. But well, I guess there's no reason to have this on hold anymore. Yeah, really. Bruce is ruining it live. Yeah, thanks a lot, Bruce. Excuse me. You're welcome. Um, the Fenway Sports Group agreed to purchase a controlling interest in the Pittsburgh Penguins. The sale is believed to be for approximately $900 million, according to the Athletics' Pierre Lebrun. 
Jake DeBrusque requested a trade from Boston, um, according to Ryan Rashog earlier this week. I think Jake DeBrusque could be a good fit somewhere. Like he's got top six potential. He's got one twenty-seven goal season under his belt. There's no reason, you know, even with his cap hit, I think it's it's a little high, right? I think he's at three or three and a half, somewhere in that range. Um, I I take a chance on him if you're looking for some added offensive depth. John, you're nodding. You like that? Jake I like Rusk? that. Yep. He's, he's not like on the Jake list. Rusk. He is not on the list. Okay. <laughs> uh, November 30th, Tuesday was an absolute train wreck for the Edmonton Oilers. Duncan Keith was placed on IR. Cody Ceci was placed in COVID protocol. Uh, Marcus Niemelainen was recalled from the AHL. And practice was canceled for precautionary reasons. So it was just, Bruce, I came up to your office. It was just, I, I was almost in tears. It was just a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> And it, funny enough, it actually hasn't been that bad this week. Like, obviously, they lost to Seattle. They they were down 2-1 last they checked against LA. But they, they've been okay with their depleted uh, defense. Yeah, it hasn't been too much of an adventure. Um, I think probably Tyler and, and I, for sure, owe Miko Koskinen a, an apology. Um, he, he stole some games for the others this year. I don't know him anything. He sucks. He still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, well then. <laughs> I think it was like the third shot tonight that went in the net again. Okay, I mean, fair, fair enough. He sucks. I'm, I'm just saying, he stole that game in Vegas. Um, yeah, that, yeah. He played out of his mind in Vegas. Yeah. He really like, did. Like he had, there was three or four just grade A chances that he had no business stopping, but he did. So, um I, I'm kind of I'm off the shitting on Koskinen train. I, I know he's, his his glove hand can be a little suspect at times, but he he's kind of he's earned a little bit of rope, I think, this this far in the season. Uh, I'm driving the train. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say he'll give him a month, he'll be back on it. So oh, maybe we'll see. <clears throat> um, maybe this is the time to trade him to Philly for Carter Hart. Yeah, I, well, since you brought it up, Bruce, we might so, as well talk so about it. We might as well talk about it. They got shelled 7-1 against Tampa tonight. I think, did he get pulled after the first five goals? He got pulled after the fifth goal, but they weren't doing him any favors at all. I, I think they're they're a lot like Vancouver, who you could tell when you watch them play, they're just waiting for something to happen. And now that Travis Green is getting let go and Brudrow's coming in, maybe it's time for Vino to go too. And the team itself... They brought in a lot of guys, and I know it takes a long time to get to get everybody kind of on the same page, but they're a lot better team than they've played like. And Carter Hurts had lots of flashes of really good games, and he's had some pretty bad ones, but a lot of it's been the team in front of him. So yeah. we'll see if... Hurts been the reason why... Yeah, Hurts been the reason why they've been in a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. But tonight like, it's like as soon as the defense gets the puck, there's one defenseman in the zone, everyone else is gone. There is no support around him whatsoever. Yeah. And if the guy turns it over, it's going the other way, and it's not pretty. I think Giroux and Couturier both have no goals in their last five or six here or something like that. I've unfortunately got both of them in one league. Yeah. Um, I think Couturier scored the lone goal for them tonight. Oh, wow. Well, I've got him in one league, so that's cool. I should probably check that out. <laughs> yeah, the offense is sort of dried up there in Philly. Well, And, Mike, you, you oh, would sorry, know got the... probably better than all of us. Uh, I, I'd like your take on the, on the Philly situation. Yeah, so I, I think you guys nailed it, especially Tyler's comment when he said they they look fragile, like they're waiting for something wrong to happen. And uh, it's been that way since last season. Uh, one thing I've seen so far this year is that they're getting heavily outshot. Uh, from a puck possession point of view, they're, they're a bottom 10 team. And it, as Bruce said, it really is Carter Hart that's bailed them out this year. If it weren't for him, I, and even Martin Jones actually has been outstanding, uh, but if it weren't for the goaltending, this team would be in the basement. There's no doubt about it. They're just getting heavily outshot. The one line that was scoring at the beginning of the season scored so many goals in the first handful of games that you know all of their shooting percentage luck was you know through the roof, and so they just dried up. That, that was the Farabee, Broussard, Atkinson line, and, and that I mean that. I haven't heard anything about that line in forever. I mean, they got broken up eventually, but th- those guys haven't scored at all. Uh, I think Atkinson got one tonight, though. But, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's how I see it. it. Uh, I, I see a team that's just being heavily outshot. 
uh, they, they're suffering partially from the same problem as last year, and that's that because their top pairing defenseman is out, this year it's Ellis. Last year it was their surprise retirement by Matt Niskanen. It's forcing the defensemen from lower levels to have to jump up a pairing. And the Flyers do not have guys who can jump onto that top pairing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've tried everybody. They've tried Ristolainen, Yandel, Braun, Sealer even played on the top pairing. Uh, they just do not have somebody that can, that can jump to that top pairing. And I think that's a big problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as Oilers fans, we're seeing it here, right? It's just, it's, you have to have depth. If you don't have it, it's, it's yeah. tough, especially on defense. Um, you know, a, a young forward can make it work, but a young defenseman, it's always tougher. Yeah. Okay. Good well, stuff. Well, that used to be a position of strength for Philly too. They used to have a lot of good young defenders do it. Um, oh boy, where were we? Uh, Drake Batherson <laughs> cleared COVID protocols. We're talking about COVID again. Um, Bruce Cassidy was in COVID this week. Jack Hughes returned to the lineup against the San Jose Sharks. I think he's got one goal in three games since returning. Uh, Drew Doughty was activated from IR. He's going to play against the Anaheim Ducks, or he did play against the Anaheim Ducks earlier this week. And then I guess we should talk about Jack Hughes' contract. He signed a, an eight-year, $64 million contract extension with the New Jersey Devils. Um, I, I, to me, this is just, it's going to be a value contract down the road. It's a bit of an overpay now, and I think he had a $2 million signing bonus on the first year. Um, but as he starts producing and as the, the salary cap continues to go up, I think that's going to be a it – it reminds me of the dry settle contract from three, four years ago when everyone was up in arms about $8.5 million for dry settle. And I, I don't think it's going to be to the same extent, right? I, I don't see Hughes um, winning heart trophies. and um, But – it's, I think in time with that, that contract's going to look good. But, you know, Tyler, what do you think? Uh, it's 5-1 LA right now, so still driving the train. Um, <laughs> I think <laughs> when, you, when you project out what he's going to be in year two or three of that contract, it's going to look pretty good, especially with the salary cap going back up in a couple of years. Um, that's a lot better than bridging him, which would have been their other option. Mm-hmm. And you end up with maybe a Marner contract in a couple of years, which nobody wants. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of like um, well, Darnell Nurse. <clears throat> I mean, we like Darnell Nurse, but if they hadn't bridged him two or three times, if they had just signed him earlier to a to a reasonable contract, we pr- probably would have had him on a better value contract now. I understand why they didn't. Yep. Like give him the long term contract because you always you always wanted a little bit more. Yep. And it just seemed like over the last year and a half, he just took 10 steps instead of the one or two he was taking before. So yep. I get it, but it sucks. Yep. Uh, Mike, any thoughts on the the Jack Hughes contract? Yeah, I, I like it for New Jersey. And, you know, now they've got a really nice one-two punch at center locked down with Hughes and his year. And uh, I think that's what it's all about in hockey, right? Like right now, if you can get that one-two center punch, you're locked in. You've got Edmonton has it. Pittsburgh's had it for a decade. They've won multiple cups with it. Uh, Philadelphia never has it, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and goaltending, which is the other position where, you, well, they've got Carter Hart, but I mean, in, in years past, right, Philly's always had trouble finding good oh, goaltending. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, actually, that kind of brings me to another point. What, what's your take on Nico Heischer? Because I can't really put my thumb on that guy as to what he what he is or what he's going to be. Yeah, I, I mean, I think he's he he falls prey kind of to those expectations of being a high draft pick, right? And so people expect massive point potential from these guys because yeah. we saw so many years where the one and two picks were you know, dominant offensive superstars. And I just don't think that's going to be his game. I think he's going to be a, a great two way center for the devils for years to come. And, uh, which, which is nice. I mean, that's, that's definitely a a player you want to have on your team. Well, guys like Philip to know are are important players, right? They may not be super fantasy relevant, but they, you need them to win. So, yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Um, thoughts guys on the Rod Brindamore 
$25,000 fine for inappropriate conduct during Sunday's game. I, you know, on 32 thoughts, <clears throat> excuse me, Elliot and, and, uh, uh, anyway, they're, Elliot, they were talking about how he didn't think it was that bad. And in his, in his blog, he said uh, he didn't make much of it. And he, he caught some heat for it, apparently. But uh, did you guys see anything there that was sort of out of the ordinary or, or warranted a $25,000 fine? He threw a fit. It was just a big tantrum. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm not good at reading lips, but he just looked like he was yelling, right? Like he just, yeah. I mean... <laughs> It didn't look different from what I see on every other game. Yeah, I say I I do that at rec hockey. I don't get twenty five thousand dollars fines. <laughs> <It's 'cause laughs> thank God, is the best at rec hockey. <laughs> thank, thank God, uh, by the way. You you never play again, Tyler. That'd be the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take out a loan. Oh man, I, I just I don't see. I know that there was like talk from the league before that about um, like they sent out a memo to teams about behavior on the bench or something but i mean who cares it's a coach yelling i don't see the problem well no it just people are people are just concerned whatever i i won't make anything of it i just yeah i thought it was interesting twenty five thousand dollars and it just looked like i mean i don't know what he said either like you you alluded to mike i wasn't reading lips but uh obviously somebody didn't like what he said so we'll go with that um did you guys see that sequence from Braden holpe the other night those three saves that was incredible, wow. incredible. I I tweeted about it. So if you haven't seen that sequence, it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, it was just three straight ten bell saves, the scorpion leg kick save and the glove save, and um, yeah, it was nuts. Anyway, he uh, that was his five hundredth NHL game, uh, and according to the NHL PR Twitter account, Braden has the most wins in NHL history by a goaltender through his first five hundred games. He's got a record of 293 wins, 137 losses, and 50 overtime losses. Pretty impressive stuff from him. He's played on some good oh, teams wow. in the past, and he's had some really, really good streaks of hockey. Um, if you just took out that whole stretch in Vancouver last year, he'd look even better. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Uh, happy for him. <clears throat> so congrats to Braden. Uh, Philip Forsberg put on an absolute clinic. He scored four goals against the National Predator, or f- has the National Predators beat the Columbus Blue Jackets six nothing? He's been hot since he's come back from injury. I don't have his stats in front of me, but he's got many, many goals. Um, he scored the OT winner, I think, again last night. He's looked good, Tyler. I think you were on record, you know, earlier uh, in the preseason saying he was going to score like 150 points or something, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember I didn't say that part. That. I didn't say uh, that. No, I, I, I'm exaggerating. But you, you are a big fan of Philip Forsberg, and you, yeah, you, you, you thought he was going to have a good year this year. Yeah, I think I said like uh, it was one of your over under things. I think it was over under seventy points or something. I took the over. I think. Yeah, yeah. we'll have uh, to look yeah. back. But he's good. Well, four, go- he's four good. goals is a good game. He's good. We like Forsberg. Uh. Let's move on to John's favorite player, Ryan Getzlaff. Suffered a lower body injury in Tuesday's contest against the Kings. He is week to week and was just put on IR today. Darn. I I know, John. Yeah. I don't wish injuries on anybody. Don't get me wrong, but couldn't happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> couldn't happen to a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Callie Yarncroak and Chris Drieger are both in place on IR by the Seattle Kraken. Jordan Eberle and Jaden Schwartz will both be unavailable or were unavailable for Wednesday's game. <clears throat> They didn't play Friday either, and the Oilers still lost, unfortunately. Um, the Islanders have been cleared to play after their COVID outbreak. They played the Sharks on Thursday. John, you'll love this too. Leon Dreisaitl, Jack Campbell, and Nazem Kadri were named NHL's first or er, NHL Stars of the Month, and Leon Dreisaitl being the uh, the NHL's Player of the Month. So, is he creeping his way into second best player yet, John? Or are you still gonna fight that one? It's still fighting it. <laughs> You're driving that. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still taking McKinnon and Crosby over <clears throat> over dry side. I don't care what you say. <laughs> You're drunk. Okay, I, I won't. I won't fight you on anymore. I, I can't win that argument. So. No, no. There's no changing my mind. Okay, I'll move on. <laughs> uh, Lucas Raymond is your rookie of the month for November after posting 12 points, five goals in 14 games played. You guys like to harass me about being a fan of Lucas Raymond, but hey, the guy's pretty good. So. Uh, Casey Middlesat returned, like we said. Hockey Canada released its selection camp for 
uh, camp roster for the 2022 World Juniors. Owen Power, Shane Wright, and Connor Bedard were all included. Um, I included the link in, or I will include the link in the show notes so you can take a look at the full roster, the full list below. Joel Farabee left Wednesday's game against the Rangers with an upper body injury. He did not return. Uh, we found out later that Farabee is week to week with an upper body injury. Darcy Kemper didn't play in Wednesday's game against the Maple Leafs due to an upper body injury. Not a surprise to anybody. Um, we we talked lots about Darcy Kemper in the preseason, just saying he was way overvalued based on his ADP, and he was an injury concern. As good as the, the Avalanche may be, um, you pretty much had to handcuff him if you were going to draft him. And fantasy owners that took him anyway are, are just probably shaking their heads at this point. But Bruce, any thoughts on that one? I know you were you were kind of on the Kemper train too, but... The one driving over him or the one he was driving <laughs> on? I don't know. Which which bus were you driving? I don't know. but I was driving the one that was going over top of okay, him. Okay, good, good. Okay, thanks for correcting me. But uh, at, at least it's an upper body injury this time and not a lower body injury. Yeah, we don't so. have to talk about groins again. Oh, shit. I was going to say, no groins were harmed in the, in I, the making. No. We have a guest. I wasn't no. going to bring it up, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Mike, to subject you to that. We uh, That's the other running joke is we always end up talking about groin injuries. Bruce brings it up once an episode, so. Uh, I like it. <laughs> Tyler Bertuzzi was placed oh, in COVID it. protocol. Sorry, Bruce, cut you off there. Uh, Coach Blaschel said that Bertuzzi feels fine, but he's going to be in protocol for 10 days and miss five games. So I think he's the, the league's lone player not to be vaccinated, and he's got COVID, so hopefully, hopefully all is well there. Um, He's, he's a big piece for that Detroit team. This one I love. This just makes me so happy. Jesse Pugliarvi filed a trademark application for the name Bison King. He nice. actually did it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he loves it. Hey, Tyler, like he's just lapping that up. It's the best. It really is. <laughs> he's the best. It's the best. I love it. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's good stuff. Uh, Dallas Stars head coach Rick Bonus said that the team essentially has a 1A, 1B situation and goal with Braden Holpe and Jake Ottinger. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking this question for months. What's going to, you know, what's going to happen in Dallas? What's the situation? Uh, I heard, I, I saw something else on Twitter. It was a beat reporter, I believe, said they are trying to or, or have looked at trading Anton Kudobin. So it, it really does look like for now it's going to be Holpe, Ottinger, 1A, 1B. And we don't know what's going on with Ben Bishop. Mike, have you heard anything other than that? Uh, nothing about Bishop at all. It's very weird too, because it, as as early as like the first week of practice is in the opening season, Bishop was on the ice taking shots. Like he he was in net. He looked like a goalie. Like he he looked fine. Uh, yeah. So I, I I have no idea what's going on with Bishop. I don't I don't I mean. Obviously, they're not hiding something from the league. The league would crack down on them or whatever, but he he doesn't seem injured. He, I mean, yeah. usually when a guy comes back to practice, uh, particularly a goalie, and he's he's taking shots in practice, that usually means he's close. It's it's rare to see a goalie take shots in full pads and then, you know, be out for months at a time. So I, yeah, I, I don't quite situation. understand. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, we'll just have to wait and see, but, uh, for now, you know, for any fantasy managers that are wondering, it is Braden Holpe, Jake Ottinger, at least for the time, time being. Kudobin would look uh, good in Colorado. What's that, Tyler? Kudobin would look good in Colorado. Yeah, actually. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I don't think his contract's unreasonable either, is it? No, I think it's 3.5 for another three years, but... I'm sure there's a way oh. around that. Okay. I didn't know he had that much term left. But it was just one yeah, more they, year. they might need a third team Maybe. involved in that then, I guess, to, to make a move like that. Call up Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Arizona I think will Dallas would have to clear anything. full, or they would at least would want to clear its full salary in case, you know, anything came back with Bishop later down the road. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hodobin's got one more year at three point three 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 million. There you go. And, and maybe it's done closer to the deadline too, because that cap number goes down as we get closer. So, but that'd be a good fit because I don't think Colorado, especially after a playoff run where they 
<laughs> lost the goalie, and that's basically the reason why they lost. Wants to do that again with uh, Kemper's history, so. No. No, they're all in now, right? Like their their window is now, and they got to win. So. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, speaking of goaltenders in Chicago, Blackhawks traded Malcolm Subban to the Sabers for future considerations. Um, he was uh, promptly injured in his first game with the Sabers. <laughs> <laughs> the Buffalo effect. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's funny, but not, um, he got there and said, Nope. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks. I want no part of this. John Klingberg. Mis- Sorry, John. What's that? I was just going to say, Oh, I think my arm hurts today or something like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got to leave guys. You're going to hurt my GAA. Uh, John Klingberg missed Thursday's game due to illness. Both Jordan Biddington and Justin Falk replacing COVID protocol. Uh, Jack Eichel was seen skating on Thursday and, I saw something after that actually that they basically said he's he's cleared for everything but contact at this point. He was wearing full gear, um, and and actually there was an update from Emily Kaplan. I believe I sent that out through our Twitter account as well. Um, she just kind of gave the breakdown on what the expectations were and the schedule. It, it sounds like he'll be joining the team in about three weeks. He's working with their strength and conditioning coaches right now, so. I think they're probably just, they're still on schedule. I don't think he's really ahead of schedule. It's just he's, things are looking good. And for anyone that, that did draft Jack Eichel, you're you're in good shape at this point to have him come back and he'd be a big deadline acquisition, basically. And wait for the trade rumors to start. <clears throat> yeah, they got to clean some stuff up there in Vegas for sure. <laughs> you got to make a lot of room to get them on the roster, so. It's uh, it'll be interesting to see who's on the way out. Yeah. Uh, Matt Zuccarello returned to the Minnesota Wild on Thursday night. Josh Anderson left Thursday's game with an upper body injury. He's expected to miss two to four weeks. The dumpster fire continues in Montreal. Uh, Jeff Petrie has an upper body injury and was ruled out for Saturday's contest against the Preds. TJ Oshie, Nicholas Backstrom, and Connor Sheary were all clear for contact on Friday. Tyler Johnson is going to miss three months following neck surgery. He got the same surgery as Eichel. Yes. Yep. Uh, Jonas Corposalo has been placed on IR retroactive to December 1st. Igor Shosturkin left Friday's game with a lower body injury. The Russian goalie was in quite a bit of distress. Um, Gallant told the media after, you know, team doctors are saying it's not as, as bad as it looked. He's going to miss three games at least for the upcoming week. He's on IR. Um, so not great. Hopefully, hopefully it's just a short term thing, <clears throat> but, uh, cause he's been putting together just an unreal season. So, uh, Bruce, you, you, you panicked. You did the, the Gorgiev ad on Yahoo. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> I and, did. Now, and now he's gone. <laughs> uh, I thought better of it and I, I dumped him now. So I, I thought about it briefly and I, I think I looked at his numbers and I was like, nah, no thanks. I'll, I'll stream somebody else. <laughs> It's bad. I got a little bit of help for that game because he played the next night and it wasn't too bad. And then, okay, yeah, it's bad, says Tyler. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Leon Dreisaitl scored on the power play in his 500th NHL game, and with two assists, Ryan and Hopkins reached 500 career NHL points. I can't believe Dreisaitl has played 500 games in the league already. That's crazy. Durable. Durable. Hey, yeah. John. Hey, John. Hey, John. Pretty durable. Hey. <laughs> oh man! Uh, um, Nikita Kucherov was on the ice uh, with the, the full team at uh, at morning skate on uh, Saturday. Darnell Nurse was participating in full practice as well, and as we know, he's he's back tonight. Scored a pretty nice goal. He kind of walked around Doughty and flipped it up on quick. Good for him to get one there. Uh, the Canadians claimed Kale Clegg off waivers from the Kings. And we've got Ovi Watch. He scored his 750th career goal, becoming just the fourth player in league history to reach that mark behind Wayne Gretzky, Gordie Howe, and Yarmir Yager. Mitch Marner missed time on Saturday and uh, today's game against the Jets after a collision in practice with Jake Muzzin. Did you guys see the clip? He did not look impressed with Muzzin. And it was kind of like, Tyler, if you decided to walk up to Andy Sutton and just start like, poking him with your finger and yelling at him. 
bad idea. Even I know that's a bad idea. Just a bad idea, right? And that's kind of what Martin was doing to Muzzin. It was pretty funny, actually. Um, Charlie McAvoy missed Saturday's contest against the Lightning, and the Bruins are off until Wednesday, so hopefully it's just a day-to-day thing. But um, Cam McCarr did not play on Saturday against the Ottawa Senators. He sidelined with an upper body injury. Uh, he did take part in warm-ups before ultimately sitting out the game. The Kings have activated Quinton Byfield from IR and loaned him to the Ontario Reign. I assume we'll see him, see him up uh, shortly at some point. Blake Wheeler played in his 1,000th NHL game on Sunday versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. I, I want to say good for anyone who's held on to Blake Wheeler to this point. There was a lot of people I saw asking questions this week and, and the week before. Do I do I drop Blake Wheeler? He's been bad, whatever. Um, someone in our Yahoo League, Bruce, actually dropped Blake Wheeler and I picked him up. Like he's he's center right wing eligible and I think he's seventy percent owned right now. Um, he had three assists two games ago, the game before tonight, and mm-hmm. so I mean that could be the start of something there. He's still getting the ice time. He's still getting power play time. He's still getting regular time on ice. Um, he's got ten points I think in whatever it was twenty or twenty two games. So so obviously a down year for him, but he's just we're going to see some regression if you look at his numbers. He's not going to be this bad all season. Yeah, you'll beat me to him. Yeah, I might have just had waiver priority on you, Bruce. I'm not sure what happened there, but it probably is. I've I've been near the bottom, so that means if you got him off waiver, that means I'm one up on you now. <laughs> so in in this league that we play in, it's a 12 team. Uh, it's, a, it's a keeper, 12 team keeper, and it's supposed to be a keeper, but he's forgot to do the keepers. The last yeah, we years. we won't get into that too much, but um, <laughs> I I think I've claimed now Wheeler and Malkin. And who was the other guy? Someone else off waivers. Like, just, I don't know why people were dropping him, and I just got the chance to pick him up. So, I guess my point in saying all this is be patient. Like, yeah, Blake Wheeler's been bad, but he's not going to be that bad all season. And, Tyler, you mentioned it a couple weeks ago. Like, you got to look at it that way. Yeah, he's bad now, but wait wait, come playoff time, right, when you're in fantasy playoffs. As long as that guy's getting the the deployment and the lineup placement that, that that's important, they're, they're going to produce at some point. Yeah, I'm like six and one right now. Good for you. Uh, soon, soon to be six and two, and I'll probably make the playoffs and lose in the first round. So, um, <laughs> you don't have to be six and two. <laughs> you just gotta hang around. You just gotta make it. That's it. Just make the just playoffs. Just like the Oilers from the 1992 to 2010. You just gotta hang around. Just gotta hang around. That's it. Just gotta squeak in. Yep. So you're saying there's a chance. Uh, William Carlson made his return to the Vegas lineup tonight. I don't know what he's done yet because we've obviously been here, but uh, he's back. And Travis Green was fired by the Vancouver Canucks. Bruce Boudreaux is expected to be announced as his replacement. Um, I probably not surprised anyone here. Hey guys, like they, it just it, it needed to happen. Whether it was him, and actually, there's hearing some things through Twitter that. They may be looking at firing Benning as well, and just doing some Actually, uh, cleanup. They have Farhan to. is confirmed. Farhan is confirmed. Benning's gone too. Wow. Oh, Good. really? Oh, wow! Wow! Yeah, it's uh, TSN's reporting that uh, Farhan actually confirms GM Jim Benning has been let go by the Canucks. Okay, they had to. Like the game last night, they were chanting that so loud to fire Benning, and they've been doing it almost every home game. Yeah, it was time. The amount of trades that he's made that just have gone the wrong way for them but it's like definitely time were any of those trades like i mean okay you don't like the oel one for the contract um and i guess he hasn't been great this year but i mean it's probably not a it's not a terrible gamble to make right like if you just bet on that guy to maybe bounce back um garland's been fantastic that was one of his right yeah yeah it's with oel too it's it's the it's a cap number in the term. Yeah. That that stuff when it's a flat cap it can it can cause a lot of problems. So uh JT Miller was another good one that he made. Uh but for every good one that he's made there's been two or three that weren't. Some not so good ones. Yeah. Fair enough. Well it Nate Schmidt, right? So he he didn't really work out in Vancouver. He's looked pretty good in Winnipeg. Like sometimes it just doesn't work out, I guess, is my point, but Okay. It's not like they gave up a huge amount for Schmidt though either. He got him. They got him for a song from Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, a lot of this, you gotta, you gotta put some blame on, on Patterson too. I think like he's had a terrible year, terrible year and a half really. So he's got to claim some responsibility for this. All right, let's not get too down. Let's move on to our next segment here, guys. Um, Ask the Hacks. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. Every week, we're going to ask our listeners to fire off some questions. We're going to do our best to answer them. Um, Mike, we've got you here this week. We really want to... We're, we're going to kind of feature you in this section here, this segment here. So uh, I'll, I'll just start firing away and, and you can... You know, give us your answer, and, and guys, just chime in as as you as you want. So, um, the question here is: best two goalies for the rest of the season: Mackenzie Blackwood, Carter Hart, or Darcy Kemper. Categories are wins, uh, shots against, save percentage, and shutouts. Is there a fourth option? No. <laughs> Carter Hart. Yeah. It's the only answer. So best best two best two of the three. Who are you taking? Oh, there's two. Sorry, I wasn't listening to the question. Uh, Camper and Hart. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. <laughs> uh, Mike, what's your t- what's your take on that? Yeah. So on, on this, I, I'm looking at on a team level and on the individual goalie level. And so for me, uh, from the team level, I, I like Colorado. I mean, they're out of those three teams. I think Colorado is the best. And even if Kemper is not individually very good, the team is going to win. Uh, yep. I mean, they're scoring almost four goals a game, I think, this season. Uh, so th- that's who I would go with. I would actually stick with Kemper here just for the wins. Uh, my second goalie here would be it would be Carter Hart. Uh, I, I think he's the most talented of the three. And I'm worried about Blackwood because Blackwood's uh, save percentage on the penalty kill is sitting at .921. Uh, the league average is usually about .875 on that. So... So Blackwood's numbers so far this season have been boosted by luck, and he only has a point nine zero six. Okay. Hmm. So I'm I'm a little bit worried about Blackwood's numbers coming down overall. So Hart and Kemper would be my my two there. Great okay. answer, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we got him here. Um, is it time to part ways with Taylor Hall? If you haven't already. And Mike, I'll go to you again here. Okay, so when I look at Taylor Hall, uh, I, I want to look, look at two things. And I do this for any skater that, I, that I'm evaluating. I, I want to look at what he's doing behavior-wise and, and what's happening to him in terms of luck. And so behavior is just stuff he can control. That's stuff like uh, shot production. And I think right now Hall's sitting at about 2.5, 2.6 two shots per game. Uh, yep. And that's kind of in line with what he did when he was with Buffalo, but it's down quite a bit from his previous seasons, uh, almost a full shot uh, down from his previous seasons. So a little bit worried there about the shot production. Um, but on the other hand, his overall point totals point totals are being held down by some bad luck. Uh, and, I, and I'll look at two numbers here. One is the team when Hall is on the ice has only scored on 5.3% of their shots. Uh, that, that number should be about 8.5%. So a little bit unlucky there. And then on top of that, his individual points percentage sits at uh, 46%. And so you've got a bad combination there. One, uh, the Bruins are not scoring when Hall is on the ice. And when they do score, Hall doesn't get the points. Um, and to me, that that's luck. That that's just bad luck. Um, and so I, I think I've written down some numbers here. I've got about I've got hauled down about four points on the season so far due to bad luck. And so he should have about fifteen points on the season right now in twenty one games. And so if, if I'm looking at analyzing Hall, whether or not I want him on my team, that's the number I would use instead of seeing Hall as a guy who only has eleven points. I see him as a guy who has 15. Not a huge jump, but it, it helps a little bit there. Uh, but again, for me, the bigger concerning factor is the shots on goal are, are down for him. Yeah, yeah, considerably. Uh, so is, is he a buy-low candidate for you? Like if if you are if you don't own Hall, are you going to kind of look at him and go, yeah, maybe I'll try and swing a trade? Uh, 
I just don't see the a huge upside there. I mean, even though it's a, it's a nice little jump for him, he gets four extra points in, in those yeah. games. It's still not a huge point pace on the season. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fair. I was just curious. Um, drop Thomas Shabbat or Eric Carlson for Tyson Berry? I, I would do it. I, I would not I would not do it for Shabbat, but I, I would do it with Eric Carlson. And okay. my argument there is just that his production so far is it's boosted by that really high shooting percentage he has. He's 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 actually scored on 13.5% of the shots he's taken, which if he were a forward, that would be a reasonable bit. As a def- defenseman, that's that's over twice his career average. Hmm. And, and I think I think Barry uh Barry outshoots him, out hits him, and out blocks him. So that that's an exchange I would make there is Eric Carlson for Barry. And, and quarterback's a better power play in Edmonton. Obviously they're first in the league. Oh yeah, that's right. He, he's he's been bumped back up right to that first unit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see Tyler selling Carlson high soon. <laughs> <laughs> you will not. I mean, I won't get a trade request, <laughs> but uh, somebody else around the league might. Yeah, he, he actually sent me a shifts. text before the show and asked me not to highlight that number oh, I bet he did. <laughs> before he sent the trade offer. <laughs> yeah, he probably sent you an e transfer too. I don't know how that works. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Collusion. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. Would you drop Linus Olmark or Jeremy Swayman for Alex Nedelkovich? I would personally, but like I'm seeing some nods. Yeah, John saying yes. Tyler's yeah. gonna. Uh, Mike, what's your take on that one? Uh, I, I would do it, uh, and even though it, it sounds a little crazy, I would actually do it for Swayman. Uh, that that would be the guy. Uh, Swayman has the higher save percentage so far. He's got point nine one nine compared to Olmark. I think Olmark's just sitting at about nine point one four. Sorry, point nine one four. But uh, Swayman's numbers are boosted by uh, a really high penalty kill save percentage. So when you when you compare those two Boston goalies at, at even strength, it comes out pretty much even. Mm-hmm. And so what I'm looking toward is is what uh, uh, Devin was bringing up earlier, and that's that the potential return of Tuka Rask maybe in January. And, and if that happens, I think the only way that that scenario goes down is that Swayman goes to the AHL. Yeah. And so, so you're looking at maybe what about a month, maybe, maybe six weeks of Swayman sharing duties with Olmark and then maybe he's gone. Makes sense. You know, and, and meanwhile, the Delkovich has actually been quite good and, and he's essentially taken over that role in, uh, in Detroit. Oh yeah, they were doing a split for a while, right? And then uh, just about seven to ten days ago, he started getting every start. It seemed like. Yeah, he's got sixteen games here now in the season. Uh, he's played in seven of the last eight games. It looks like here, if I read that right. Um, so he's been good. He's got a nine twenty save percentage on the season. Um, Where's his PK save percentage? Eight sixty four. If I read that, if that's yeah, yeah, it's, it's very reasonable. So his numbers look, they look real. Yeah, and and we saw how good he was in Carolina last year. So I, for for me anyway, personally, I, I wouldn't hesitate for a second to drop Swayman and pick up Nedeljkovic. Um, thoughts on Hellebuck? I'm attempting to trade him for some scoring help categories or wins, shots against, save percentage, goals against average, shutouts. I also have Jari, Shesterkin, and Saros. That's a that's it's just a, an embarrassment of riches for Colts. I, I know when I, when I first <laughs> read this question, I was like, "You have who? You have all these guys? Like this is amazing." That's crazy. Uh, I mean, he oh, has God. three of the best goalies I would have listed in the preseason. Well, actually, four. I mean, I, I, if he, if he's considering keeping Hellebuck, you know. Yeah. I. What do you do? Like, do you? I mean, I I kind of I think when I was it, it might have come in through Instagram. Um. And I said, yeah, I mean, I guess if you could try and swing a deal where you get some major help up front, like if you're short at forward, I mean, you got to you got to think about trading with one of these guys, right? Yeah, I mean, depending on how many goalie starts he can 
he can manage with, you know, the schedule conflicts. It seems really wise to get rid of one of these goalies, especially, like you said, if he can get a nice forward in return. But now would you look at this and go, sorry, go ahead, Mike. Well, I was just going to say that there's only one little drawback here from a stats point of view, and that's that I I don't think he's seeing the real Hellebuck yet. Uh, If if you look at his penalty kill safer percentage, it's one of the worst in the leagues. It's uh, 0.798, and and that's ridiculously low. There's just no way it's going (laughs) to remain at that level for the rest of the season. So uh, I I think he's, he's... he would be selling low a little bit at this time. Um, but I wouldn't let that stop me from from dealing from this position of strength. Okay. Yeah. And, and is he the guy you would move, in your opinion? Like Halibut, Jari, Shesterk, and Saros? Uh, I think so, yes. Okay. I, I think so. I, I, I'm hesitating here because... <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the Rangers. They're getting heavily outshot. They're probably, I think they're like the third or fourth worst puck possession team in the entire league. And uh, they're being held into into the games with the, and, and then for the season with their, with their goalie, right? Yeah. And you just wonder how long something like that can last. How, 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 how long can you be heavily outshot and have your goalie continue winning games for you? And that's just, I think that's kind of unanswerable, especially when the goalie is that good. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff there. Um, Crosby or Zibanejad the rest of the season. Categories, goals, assists, plus, minus, shots on goal, hits, blocks, and power play points. I thought this one was interesting because Crosby's off to. Crosby hands down. I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I, I i'm a crosby guy too but i he's off to his worst season that we've seen right from him in his career um and i, I like sabanajad too but i yeah i'm just curious like it's okay tyler you're laughing Who, who's your guy here are you taking crosby or sabanajad uh crosby do you love new york and you love sabanajad but me and john are both <laughs> driving the crosby train we're all driving trains tonight different Absolutely. ones absolutely yeah, yeah. I'm jumping on board the, the bandwagon. I'm taking Crosby too. But yeah. Bruce, oh, Crosby, well, like welcome it? aboard. His last five, so. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> welcome Sorry, aboard. John, what were you saying? And then we'll jump to Bruce. I was just saying Crosby's got eight points in his last five games. He's he's starting to turn it around, and eventually Mulkin is coming back. Hopefully. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they, they've been and, fighting a lot of injuries so, in Pittsburgh. Like Brian yeah. Rustic, we said, is week to week, and Mulkin's not back yet. And, um, I think Gensel, did he have COVID at one point? Like, it's just kind of been all over the map with Pittsburgh, and he's recovering from wrist surgery, and yeah, it's just all over the place. But uh, Bruce, who do you like there? Oh, I'm going to take Crosby, too. I, well, I'm a fat Crosby fan, so I'm just going to sit here and let Mike tell us that it should be Zavannah jump for the rest of the season. So. <laughs> uh, don't, don't do yeah. it. Don't do I, it. I'm, I'm going to let you down. I'm actually going you, with my there, mortal <laughs> enemy here. I'm, I'm picking Crosby. <laughs> nice. There's room on the train, Mike. Yeah, I, I think, <laughs> I think he's, he's the guy to go with here. And, uh, you know, there's kind of a neat little stat here. I noticed that this manager is using the plus minus category. Yeah. And uh, Crosby is sitting at a minus six in just 12 games played, which is awful for him. It's actually awful for any player. Um, <laughs> but I, I wanted to make a note of that because I, I wanted this manager to have a little bit of confidence in that this plus minus is going to go sky high for Crosby in the coming weeks. And, and here's why Crosby's PDO is sitting at 966. Uh, usually the league average on that number is about a thousand. And when a player's PDO is that low, 966, it means that he's getting hit from both ends. His, his team is not scoring when he's on the ice and his team is allowing uh, goals against at an unusual rate when he's on the ice. And since all that's at even strength, he's not getting pluses because there's no goals and he's getting a bunch of minuses because there are a lot of goals against. And so that's where that minus six has come from. And it's just, to me, it's unsustainable with that, with that level at nine, six, six, I think he's going to turn it around. And, and so whoever sent in this question, uh, don't have any fear about that plus minus it's going to turn around. Okay. 
I wonder if they count uh, shifts. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to throw it in there, eh? <laughs> I did. We'll, I we'll, do it we'll correct one, that later. Yeah, no, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Maybe for next year, we'll, we'll correct that. Yeah, uh, good. I thought this one was interesting. I threw it out to you guys earlier this week. Uh, there's some pretty emphatic no's. Would you trade Elias Patterson for Andrew Mangiapane? And no. Tyler, right away, you said absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, and, and I'm on board because Pedersen is at the absolute loose, lowest you, you're ever going to see him right now. Yeah. And Manji Pani is probably at the highest you're ever going to see him. Like, he scored another two goals the, in a day. These are the trades that I try to make, and nobody <laughs> takes them. But these are the ones I try to make. <laughs> and I would say no to it, so. Yeah. I, I just, Especially I with, with a... With the coaching change, too, um, Pedersen's never been worse. Um, I, I don't think it's going to happen overnight, but I think it'll take a little bit of time. But I don't think Vancouver is going to climb back into it, but I think fantasy-wise, Pedersen and Hughes and Miller. Besser. Um, Besser, too, who's been awful. They're all going to kind of turn it around slowly here, and that's really all that matters. Mangiapane, what does he have, like three assists? Yeah. Yeah, they've been joking about the Cy Young thing, right? It's kind of yeah, yeah. But, but if you look, like his his shooting percentage is astronomically high. Like, I mean, he's a seventeen percent career shooter, I believe. So I shouldn't say it's astronomical for him. He's he's, but it's still high. Twenty six percent is high. Like he, and and you look at the rest of his numbers there too. It just he's playing on on the second line. He's been playing with Backlund, who's a good player, but then it's kind of been Lucic or Coleman, right? Like not big offensive forwards and. Uh, he's and he's still getting power play two time. He's not like so. He's just when you compare apples to apples, it's to me it's it doesn't work. Um, I'm not making that trade. Which actually led to another is kind of a almost a two part question. But in a deep 14 team keeper league, is Mangiapane a keeper? Each team can keep eight players. No. And and I said no as well. Just I I, I said I probably need to see the team. I'd like show me the roster. Who are you? Who are you keeping ahead of? Mangiapane, right? Or who you or are you keeping Mangiapane dropping? Like, but I, I just I don't have a lot of confidence. It's a long term thing. But Mike, I was curious to get your opinion on Mangiapane this season because ever, everyone's been talking about the guy. Yeah, yeah, I, I see it the same way as you guys do. Uh, that that high shooting percentage that he has, a lot of it's coming from the uh, the power play where he has scored on sixty two point five percent of the shots he's taken. <laughs> Which is insane, that's good, right? right? Like that's, wow. that's the most that's insane good. power play percentage I've ever heard of in my life. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, he, he's he's going to come back down to normal. I, I think when you adjust his values for luck, you're looking at a guy that's kind of a, a sub-50 point pace player. And I'm, I'm not sure that makes the cut in a, in a keeper league. Yeah. yeah As an I Oilers agree. fan... He he is the hot streak version of Yamamoto. That's what he is. And he's just on that 27-game heater. Streak, yeah. That Yamamoto was on. And they play kind of similar. They have the same kind of style. He's just on that other end of it right now. So, Yeah, like prior to this season, uh, like he's shooting more. But, he, you know, he was around one and a half shots on goal per game. Um, and his career best is 32 points. Like he's just like you said, Mike. He's a sub fifty point player. So I wasn't sold on him. I know a lot of there's a lot of hype around that guy right now, but just for me, it's a pass. Um, drop Kevin Fiala for Ryan Hartman, Jesper Bratt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, <laughs> Jesper Bratt, Andrew Kopp, and Riley Smith are available too. Rotisserie season long goals, assists, power play points, game winning goals, plus minus hits, and a three day waiver wire period. Um, Hartman's been unreal, and actually, I just I threw him in our, our waiver wire segment just just because I think we got to talk about him a little bit. But um, everyone agrees you you would drop Fiala for Hartman. Yep. Yep. I'm getting a lot of nods, Mike. What, what's your take on this? Uh, I've got the only no vote here. I think. <laughs> uh, Ooh. <laughs> it, it, it's a tough call for me. Uh, the the number I, I looked at for both of these guys since they're on the same team was I looked at the even strength save per, sorry the even strength shooting percentage of the team while either Fiala or Hartman were on the ice, and so for Hartman it's sitting at fourteen point six percent, 
And for Fiala, it's just 6.5%. So right now, I think what you see with Fiala is more or less what you get. Like, I, I don't think he's been heavily influenced by luck. If anything, I think he's had too many assists and too few goals. But that his point total is more or less in line with what is expected from him. Uh, with Hartman, though, uh, I think you're looking at a big boost here. I think I have some notes here that uh, I have Hartman coming in around 13 or 14 points in these 24 games after you adjust him for luck. Interesting. So, okay. So for so, so for it, me, I, I have it close, but I I, I wouldn't do it. I, I like the upside of Fiala still here. And he's traditionally or historically a, a second half player, Kevin Fiala. Oh, Generally. interesting. I, I I did not know that. I think if you look through the numbers, it, it it's shown that way anyway. Generally, the last couple of seasons, I think the second half of the season, he's performed better. Um, he hangs out till Christmas and then then plays hockey. And then, <laughs> and then plays hockey. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I do the same. No. Thing. No, so if you're voting for Fiala, yeah, that's just kind of an added bonus. I mean, come playoff time for fantasy hockey, he's going to be, he's going to be a better asset. Uh, who is the better goalie to stash, Rask or Price? And you guys know my answer. Price. No, my my is Rask for me. <laughs> <laughs> I would lean toward Rask myself too. Yeah, I'm me too. You don't have both of them stashed. Yeah. Hey man, it's it's a viable strategy. You got a stash, and you can. You put like <laughs> yeah, I'm on, our, on the RAS train too everything. here. I have a question though. I in in the Yahoo leagues, I, I know Price is listed as an IR, so you can you can definitely throw him on IR. But I think right now Rask is listed as one of those NAs. Yep. And you you can't do anything with those guys, right? Like that. You, in our you league, can in you our could. league. Yeah, oh, in could. our Yahoo league, you could. Yeah, I actually, so not active. And I've actually got Rask stashed in that Yahoo league. No kidding. It, it, just like yeah. in an IR plus slot, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And and there's no issue throwing well, them on there. So There's an NA slot in our league. Okay. If you go into the league settings, there is an NA, a slot for NA. Oh, you do have league. that. Okay. So, can, so there you we go. We do have one. Yeah. Okay, great. See, and I, yeah, I just threw Did them on Devin, there. Oh, okay. Did Devin put that I, in there? I'm not the commissioner in that <laughs> league. Added, Tyler. He I added it last week. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, not my call. Battle of the commissioners. Battle of the commissioners. Hey, I'm new to this. I'm a rookie commissioner, and Tyler's been a commissioner for like ten years. We so. can tell. We can tell. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just learning the ropes, you, man. You sure can. Care, honestly. <laughs> Tyler holds firm on the rules, and I've got like six championships, but it's my first year as a, as a commissioner, so. Yeah, those championships. Well, I, I have a yeah, little story about the so if you don't mind me throwing this in here real quick. You, you guys have mentioned oh, a, a couple of mistakes. Uh, one league that I'm in this year, it, it's been, I think it's been about three or four years running now. It's just kind of your standard head to head points league, and we have a playoff system. When our commissioner set up the league this year, something went wrong when he did, and he forgot to set up the playoffs in, in the schedule. So we are a head-to-head league with no playoffs. I don't nice. know what's going to happen. Like it's just, it's, we're just going to play till the end of the season, and and that's it. Like somebody, oh, that's it. Somebody Thanks wins because they have the best record, I guess. Everybody gets participation yep. ribbons in that league. Yep. Thanks for yeah, coming. It was, it was brutal. Thanks for playing. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Gift cards for everybody. Yeah. Uh. Set up for you, Tyler. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it happens. Well, like Bruce said, we got the our commissioner in this Yahoo League. He every single year for, forgets to set the keepers. Two straight years now he's forgot. And there's always one or two guys yeah. that absolutely lose their marbles. Uh, the one guy had McDavid and just I think his team name now is Why Am I Still in This League? Oh no. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh anyway, we've got well, way off the rails isn't... there. <laughs> yeah. Uh Last question here for Ask the Hacks. Sam Bennett or Andre Svechnikov? Standard categories, but includes hits and pims. Svechnikov. This one's kind of tough because Svechnikov will have more points, but Bennett will have the better category coverage. So it's that's a tough one. Yeah, like for I what think- it's worth, in, in the one group that was asking, um, 
a lot of people said Sveshnikov. I think the majority of the answers were Sveshnikov. Yeah, he's only he's, playing, he'll score a lot more points than Bennett will. Yeah, he's only playing like 16 minutes a night or something around there. I don't know why they refuse to just put him on the first line, first power play all the time. He should play like 20 minutes a night. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. He's, you're right. You're right. He's, he's been mostly on what you would call the third line, I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, they, they've bounced the lines around a, a good bit in Carolina this year, but that, that's been his home is the third left wing. And yeah, even strange. even as third left wing, I I would take him over Sam Bennett in this in this setup. Okay. Great answer. Great answer. There you go, listener. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess it's a good time, guys, to let you know that the Fantasy Hockey X podcast is a proud partner of NHLShop.ca, the best source for all your officially licensed NHL apparel and merchandise. Follow the links in our show notes or on our website. Are you looking for the perfect holiday gift? Save up to 50% on select apparel now and get free shipping on orders over $99. Use promo code NHLFS99 at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. See store for details. For full disclosure, Fantasy Hockey Hacks may receive a small commission for your purchase, which helps us to continue providing original content and funds Tyler's gambling addiction at Sports Interaction. And I need it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so did Brit did Brit use the code when she ordered your birthday present or did she she sure did buddy yeah <laughs> did she <laughs> actually good. well is, is you go on the website and, and the promo code's there so you got to use it oh good good <laughs> <Yeah>. for her <laughs> and I think it was even on sale oh wow if you oh. can imagine oh, wow. um all right let's move on to our next segment here edge work the uh, the segment where we work to give you the edge in your fantasy hockey leagues. Winning. NHL schedule week nine. Here's what you need to know. The NHL is back in full swing for week nine as no team on the schedule plays less than three games and one team, the Anaheim Ducks, play five. As per usual, there are four light days throughout the week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Plan accordingly. So on Monday, we've got six games. Tuesday, 10 games. Wednesday, four games. Thursday, 10. Friday, seven. Saturday, 12. And Sunday, five. All of this information for our listeners will be available in the show notes. Um, so I kind of just breezed through it there, but then we're going to go through some of the teams that are of interest for next week. Mike, if you have any feedback on on these teams or, or maybe a team that is of interest to you that isn't mentioned here, um, please chime in. Yeah, sure thing. So obviously the first one up here is is there's one one team with five games for next week, and that's the Anaheim Ducks. Um They've got a relatively favorable schedule. I think looking at it, they've got the Washington Capitals, the Buffalo Sabres, the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Penguins, and the St. Louis Blues. Uh, so, you know, two or three of those matchups are winnable and, and should uh, provide some fantasy benefit for your roster. Some players to consider, Trevor Zegras, Ricard Raquel, and Sonny Milano. That entire second line, or maybe it's their first line now, I'm not really sure, but uh, they've, they've played well. Um, and all of those guys are 50% or less um, rostered in Yahoo!, and if they are not available for some reason, take a look at Adam Henrique, Cam Fowler, or Jamie Drysdale. Uh, teams with four games, Carolina, Colorado, Dallas, Minnesota, New Jersey, Nashville, New York, Philly, St. Louis, and Vancouver. The Canucks have been a disaster this season, but they have won a couple games here. They fired their, their coach. They fired their GM. Uh, they could do a four games next week, and they're all on off nights. So even just to, for optimizing your schedule for next week i think the vancouver canucks makes some sense um we've kind of been crapping all over this episode but um you know look at looking at the at the schedule it, it makes some sense and there are some guys like niels hoaglander tanner pearson and Vasily Bod- pod colson available on the wire any other thoughts there guys on the canucks nope uh the st louis blues they are seventh in the league at 3.26 goals for per game, and they've got four games at home next week against the Panthers, the Red Wings, the Canadians, and the Ducks. Some players to consider there, Robert Thomas, Brandon Saad, uh, Ivan Barbashev, and Scott Perunovic. Uh, we'll talk about Perunovic in, um, in our waiver wire pickups because he's had, he's had a pretty productive week here. Uh, Mike, you mentioned earlier you like the Colorado Avalanche. They are scoring at a league high 3.95 goals for per game. So you said four. They're, they're right there. Um, and they've got a reasonably favorable schedule next week with games against Philly, uh, the Rangers, the Red Wings, and the Panthers. 
They play all four of their games on off nights, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So again, if you're trying to optimize your your schedule for the upcoming week, take a look at those guys. They've got Valerie Nishushkin, Andre Burakovsky, Alex Newhook, and Bowen Byram available in roughly 60% or less of all leagues. Nishushkin, actually, I think that's another one we'll talk about in our waiver wire pickups. He's only 18% rostered. Uh, the New Jersey Devils have a very appealing schedule next week. The collective record of their opponents is 29-43-8, and eight, and the Devils are currently tied for 15th in goals four per game at 2.91. Take a look at uh, Nico Heischer, Dawson Mercer, or Jesper Bratt. Uh, Pavel Zaka is actually only 14% owned as well. And then we've got uh, the rest of the league basically plays three games. So as we mentioned, no one plays two next week. Um, one team of interest here you want to take a look at is the Toronto Maple Leafs. They've got three home contests against the Blue Jackets. Um, who are 25th in the league at 3.24 goals against per game. The Lightning and the Blackhawks, who are 24th in goals against per game at 3.18. The Leafs are clipping along at 3.08 goals for per game, and uh, they should be able to pad some of their totals for next week. Take a look at Michael Bunting at 32% rostered, Alex Kerfoot, uh, or Joseph Wall, if you're looking for a streamer in goal. I just posted earlier today, Michael Bunting, I think he's third or fourth in, in Calder scoring so far this year. So if you, can, if you can grab him, he's playing on Austin Matthews' wing. I, it makes a lot of sense to me at 32% rostered. Uh, the New York Islanders are off to a rough start, obviously, 5-10-3. They're last in the Metro. Uh, but this upcoming week may be just what they need. They've got matchups against the Senators, the Predators, and the Devils. Um, I think Oliver Wallstrom was one guy I said you should take a look at. Uh, Noah Dobson is another one. They're not in my show notes here for some reason, but... Um, they will be when this goes live tomorrow. So take a look. And with that, let's move on to our NHL week nine waiver wire targets, starting with Jeff Skinner. And this guy gets a lot of hate. Mike, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. He's actually having a bit of a bounce back season here. Yeah. I mean, he, he was basically invisible for a couple of seasons, right? Uh, yeah. After signing that contract and, you know, he's always been a fairly high volume shooter, which is something you could rely on in fantasy hockey. Uh, but it's nice to see him actually having this bounce bounce back season. We we had him listed in our draft kit as as uh, we we do, we do an annual list of which guys we think will see the greatest regression, meaning you know bounce back. And uh, Skinner was on that list for us, so it's nice to see him. You know, at least recouping some of that value that he had from years ago. Yeah, for sure. And he's been playing with Tage Thompson, who's having a phenomenal season, um, as well as Victor Olofsson, who we know in the past can be a producer, a goal scorer, especially in the power play. So, I mean, Skinner's 7% owned it. I think given his, his line mates and some of what he's done this year, he's probably worth a stream at least for a week anyway, or or possibly beyond if he keeps producing, right? Yeah, I like it, especially with, uh, you know, Shesterkin out uh, for that, that game yeah. against the Rangers. Yeah. For sure. Um, I mentioned here Casey Middlestat. Bruce, you had brought him up. And, and of course, he's only 3% roster, but he's back and he's healthy. And um, he had done really well at the end of last season. So maybe someone you want to look at as well. Uh, I do have Jesper Bratt here. He's 42% rostered. Four games for next week against Ottawa, Philly, Nashville, and the Islanders. He's playing with uh, Andreas Janssen and Dawson Mercer. Dawson Mercer is top 10 or 10 or, or top 10 or 15 in Calder scoring right now. So he's been really good so far this year. Um, and, and Brad's getting some power play two time. He's got 19 points, six goals in 22 games so far this year, putting him on pace for a career high 71 points. His shot volume is up considerably versus past seasons. He's at three shots on goal per game right now. Um, and his individual shooting percentage at 9.2% is actually below his three year average of 10.9. So, I mean, Mike, you could probably say better than I could. Is there is there room for even further production there from Bratz? Or are we kind of, is it a mirage? What's your take on him? No, I, I think you might see a little bit more, especially from a, a goal, scoring, goal scoring perspective. Uh, I have a little bit of concern about the assist rate only because uh, the, sorry, the Devils are scoring at about 10.2% at even strength with Brad on the ice. So he's okay. getting a little bit lucky there, probably in the assist category. But otherwise, I think I think he's got some upside on the goal scoring. Okay, there you go, and he's he's available in, in 
around 60% of Yahoo League. So give him a look. Clayton Keller. Um, he's got three games for next week at Dallas versus Florida and versus Philly. And he's playing on that top line. It's hot power play. unit. he's only 22% rostered left wing, right wing eligible. We don't typically like to recommend players from the team's lowest goal scoring. <laughs> the league's, you know, anyway, um, but he's been good. He's been putting up points. He's on pace for 55. Uh, he's got 10 points, three goals in his last eight games played. Uh, you know, the, the power play is awful at 12.1%, but I think, I think as a streamer, he's got some values in putting up points. Any, any takes there guys? No, nope. yeah, just, okay. just a, a minor note, uh, about the coyotes. And that's that they are actually keeping their lines fairly consistent this year. Uh, you know, between them and Detroit last season, the lines were just getting put in a blender constantly every night. And this is something I have a feel for because I, I'm updating the lines at the at the website left left wing lock. And so I'm always happy when the team is like same lines as last night. You know, I just click a little button, and everything's nice. <laughs> then it's Detroit or Arizona, and I have to update 20 guys individually, get them on new lines for the night. But that's not the case in Arizona this year. So that I think that's helpful for Clayton Keller. When, when a young yeah. player can play with line mates that he's comfortable with night after night, I think it gives yeah. him a little bit of confidence. I, I think for any player, Tyler, you can probably answer that too. It's it's when you're playing with the same guys, it makes life a lot easier. Yeah, they're still so bad. I just, they're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> just can't get over it. <laughs> they're so bad. So bad. I, it might be a case where you just, if you're in a deep league, maybe look at him. Like, I, I don't know, but. He's producing, so I think we just said we had to mention him here. Um, Anthony Sorelli is another one. He's 44% rostered. He's got three games, Montreal, Toronto, and Ottawa, so definitely a favorable schedule. He, he's an important part of that Tampa Bay team. Uh, he's playing 20-45, time on ice, power play, 224 per game, uh, both of which are substantially higher than we saw last year. He's got 16 points, 8 goals, and 23 games a season. He's on pace for a career-high 57 points. Um, his shooting percentage is high at 17.4%, but based on the other metrics I looked at, it, I think he he's probably okay. Uh, Mike, any any thoughts there on Sorelli? Yeah, no, I think I think you hit them all. Okay. Give him a look. Uh, Capo Caco. I, I think we're, we're maybe finally starting to see some of that potential that, uh, that got him drafted second overall in 2019. Uh, he's 20% rostered currently. He's got four games next week, Chicago, Colorado, Buffalo, and Nashville. He's largely been playing with Strom and Panarin, but I think in the last game he actually played with Sabanajad and Kreider. Either way, he's playing with great line mates, and uh, and he's finally putting up some points. So somebody you want to take a look at potentially for next week? Um, Valerie Nishushkin, left wing, right wing, right wing eligible for the Colorado Avalanche. He's 19% rostered. He's got four games next week, Philly, New York, Detroit, and Florida. Uh, he's playing on that second line with Kadri and Burakoski, Um and they've just been tearing it up. So give him a look, 11 points, six goals, and 12 games played. Um, he's getting minimal power play time on ice, and his shooting percentage is high at 26%, and so is his on-ice shooting percentage, or five-on-five five shooting percentage at uh, 13.1%. But any any disparaging comments about the Jushin guys or you're okay with that one John <laughs> <laughs> why you gotta look at me hey uh, um no he's picked it up the last little bit here and um it it'll be interesting to see how he how he does in the future um he's only played 12 games he's got 11 points so um I like what I've seen so far. Um, just hoping that he can keep it up in the future. Okay, fair enough. Um, I mentioned earlier we we're going to talk about Ryan Hartman. I don't think we really have to. We we kind of talked about him enough in the show here, but I I just added him. He's he's still seventy six percent owned. So you know if if by chance in the remaining approximately twenty five percent of leagues that don't own him, I, I would take a look. Uh, he's been playing a lot with Kaprizov and Zuccarello, and he's getting power play one time. So. If by chance he's available, snap him up. We'll move on to defenseman here. I've got Dmitry Orlov. Uh, he was around 50% when I wrote up the notes earlier in the week, and now he's up to 66% rostered currently. 
games played. He's got three for next week, Anaheim, Pittsburgh, and Buffalo. And he's playing on that. Uh, oh, that is not correct. Sorry, guys. I think it's supposed to be Jensen here in the notes. Um, and I believe power play too. So, But he's on pace for his best season to date at 46 points. Uh, he's got seven points in his last six games. Um, yeah, not much else to say there. But, I mean, if you're in a league that uh, I deeply that counts hits, I think he's probably worth taking a look at. Jonas Brodin. Um Mike, I like I'd like your take on Jonas Brodin. I mean, he's he's got seven percent rostered here. He plays four games next week, Edmonton, San Jose, LA, and Vegas. But he's been on the top pairing with Matt Dumba and he's playing power play one. He actually played five twenty two power play time and ice, which was eighty percent power play share in his last game. Oh wow. That's <laughs> I didn't realize he had that much power play time recently. Yeah, I I just saw it last night myself and I thought, wow, that's He's he's getting and actually I think if you look back he's he's it's been going up and up so they're they're trusting him a bit with uh, with power play time. Yeah, one one nice thing about Minnesota overall this season, uh, just kind of speaking a bit more broadly, is it is they are a better puck possession team, and so their results so far just seem a bit more grounded in reality than they were last season. Right. Uh, Bruce, you and I were chatting about this one, Scott Perunovic. Um, he's 7% rostered four games for next week against Florida, Detroit, Montreal, and Anaheim. He's playing on the third pairing with Bertuzzo, uh, and power play two. Well, I guess power play one, actually, he's been taking time from Krug, right? Slowly. Slowly. Uh, he's got five assists through 10 games. He's on pace for 41 points. And I think in the last game or two he's actually outpaced Tory Krug for power play time on ice on on the first power play unit so I, I don't know I, I think if you're if you're in a deep league again if you're looking for some help on D um if you're a Tory Krug owner you might want to even just in the short term handcuff this guy in case that does stick any other thoughts there guys on Scott Prunovich someone I actually hadn't heard of until this season I was going to say, who the hell is Scott Perunovic? But <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, that was kind of my reaction too. But then I, I, I again, I was looking at Tori Krug's time on ice and it's been going down. And obviously his production hasn't been great lately. So you always look at time on ice. It hasn't been things. great since he went to, to uh, St. Louis. Yeah. He's, he's struggling a bit, right, to get, to get back to where he was. So if your league uh, counts uh, shifts, he's no good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's where you pick up Rodine because uh, he yeah. has played over 28 minutes a couple times. So Yeah, he's been good. Yep. And that's why you keep Chikrin. He sucks. <laughs> but he plays yeah. all the time. <laughs> oh, Chikrin. <laughs> okay, guys, and then... The yeah. last uh, the last bit of the, the wave wire pickup here, we got two goaltenders, uh, Braden Holpe and Capo Kakinen. Uh, Holpe is 39% rostered. As we mentioned earlier, he's now 1A to Jake Ottinger's 1B or vice versa, however you want to throw it out there. Uh, he's got four games for next week against Arizona, Vegas, LA, and San Jose. He's currently got about 52% net share, and he played in his 500th game this week, uh, as we mentioned. He's been pretty good. Is is he's at a two point three zero goals against average and a nine twenty seven save percentage. So, I mean, a thirty nine percent owned. I, I I'd probably take a look at him. Last I checked, um, and this is probably wrong, but Dallas was on a five game winning streak. Is that right, guys? I'm not even sure. I can guarantee that thirty percent of what I say on the podcast is factual. Uh, <laughs> I'll just take a quick look here. Uh. Dallas, let's play that Jeopardy music. They have won six games, actually. They're 8-2-0 and in their last 10 games. And wow. I did actually manage in one league to grab Holpe, so I've got Holpe and Ottinger, and they've, they've really picked up their play there in Dallas. Uh, and then and then Kakinen, this is one actually that Bruce, you had mentioned to me. Um 22% rostered, four games this week, Edmonton, San Jose, LA, and Vegas. He's he's a backup. Uh, he's got 26% net share. They've, they've played Talbot a lot in Minnesota. Um, but when he does play, he's he's been 
He's been not too bad. He's won his last two contests, posting a 2.10 or 2.01 goals against average and a 9.35 save percentage. Um, not great peripherals, but I mean he's getting wins overall. So his uh, his record is four one and one on the season. Any other thoughts, okay. guys, on on goaltenders? I, I have one. It's not really. I don't think he's a. I don't think you call him a waiver target. He's probably own his ownership is probably pretty high. But I, I really like uh, Demko as a target in fantasy leagues. Uh, I think people are very down on Vancouver for, for obvious reasons. Um, and even I, I say this even before the coaching change. Uh, their, their even strength play is, uh, is not too bad. They're, they're, they're actually out shooting opponents slightly uh, on, on the year. And that's usually a good sign, right? Uh, sure. Where they're getting crushed is the penalty kill. I, I mean, their power play is awful too, but their penalty kill is miserable. And, and that's what's driving a lot of their, uh, their goals against right now. And so I think possibly if you could uh, convince someone to give you Demco, it'd be a nice, a, a nice uh, risk move to take there because you know, either he continues to do what he's doing and you messed up, or they fix that power play with the new coach and you've got the real Demco back. Because that, that's really what happens to a lot of these goalies, right? Is if their penalty kill is terrible, they're they're done for the year. They're they're shot. Uh, we yeah. saw that with Carter Hart last year. He had the the worst penalty kill in, in the league, I think, of any like true starting goalie, and his numbers were demolished. And I think if if this new coach uh, Boudreaux, I guess it is, uh, can turn that penalty kill around, I think Demko is a really nice buy low target in fantasy hockey right now. Awesome. Uh, Bruce, you had a point. Was it on Kakinen or? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, in the right matchup, he's a, he's a good, he'd be a good streamer or a spot starter. Yeah. But not someone you'd want, not someone you'd actively roster. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that 100%. He's, he's getting very few starts, so. Yeah. And very much echo Mike's sentiments on Demko. I've tried a couple of leagues to try to get someone to give up on Demko and I haven't found a taker yet. They, I, I have, they won't give up on him. I haven't so. seen one trade from you, Bruce. <laughs> well, I'm not trading with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now 50% of this podcast I, won't trade with me. I don't know what's going on, but I'll trade. With I've you. traded with you in the past. I know how that works. Okay. Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that's all we got for the show this week. We, we did run a bit long, but uh, there, there was a ton going on this week between you know, our own announcements for the podcast, all the hockey news that was going on, uh, waiver wire pickups, all that stuff. Mike, I want to thank you again so much for for joining us on the show, for partnering with us. We're, we're thrilled to be the official podcast of Left Wing Lock and working with you moving forward. Yeah, thank you again for having me on this week, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the partnership for, for a long time to come. Absolutely. All right, guys. Um, one other bit of news I should mention: we are on Facebook now. We did decide Facebook has decided that they're going to include podcast as part of their platform. So all of our audio is now actually um, uploaded there through our RSS feed. Uh, if you do choose to access it that way, John, you mentioned actually it's integrated with Spotify. So if you're on Facebook, you can actually listen to Spotify podcasts through Facebook. Um, part of the motivation, I mean, that was part of the motivation for being on Facebook, but also we can tie in with our Instagram account and we did start a group, a Facebook group. So I would encourage you, if you are on Facebook, if you go there for other fantasy hockey related groups, give our page a look, facebook.com slash fantasy hockey hacks. Um, join the group there and feel free to ask us questions, as many questions you'd like. Uh, you know, John, Bruce, Tyler, Mike, myself, we're, we're all here to answer questions. I'll put them in our notes as we always do for Ask the Hacks. Um, beyond that, guys, check us out on, on Twitter at FH Hacks. Um, on Instagram, Fantasy Hockey Hacks. Visit the website, fantasyhockeyhacks.com. And if you have any questions, you can submit them to fantasyhockeyhacks at gmail.com. All right, boys. Thanks a lot. It was a lot of fun. We will see you all next week. Take care.